for me, movement is about connection, connecting to myself, connecting to my environment, connecting to what's going on in the world. And there's always going to be painful, joyous, crazy shit happening in the world <laughs> um, that we can't really comprehend the why. And it's allowed to be with us. Sometimes we don't feel like moving because we know if we move, we'll feel different. And maybe we feel like I don't have capacity to feel anything more or different than what I feel right now. And sometimes we need to move to remind ourselves that um, we can feel different. And so, yeah, I just, whatever, whatever is with you today, um, whatever comes up in the space, just really honor where you're at always. But I wanted to be really explicit in saying that today because it's definitely there for me with um, you know, what happened in London, Ontario the other day, um, you know, like, <laughs> I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't get it. I don't know. We all have bad days <laughs> and, um, yeah, yeah. So that's very much with, with me today as well as Last week, what happened? I mean, it's all happening <laughs> for all of us. So yeah, just really, really honor that and know that maybe that means you want to push the edges of something today. Maybe that means you want to take your foot off the gas today. Um, you know, do what you need to for yourself. Okay. So we're going to start in the chair. Um, we're going to start with what we did yesterday, but we're going to do it in a chair. So strap or a looped TheraBand. Um, and I'm going to show a couple of different options. So in the chair, I've got my left foot up on the blocks. That's going to serve to be my knee that I'm going to put my strap around. And my other leg's going to be extended out on the, the floor. I'm going to have that knee a little bit bent. Um, you can come with the leg out here. I find for me that on the chair, it wants to take my pelvis into an anterior tilt. So then I feel like I'm falling off the edge of the chair. So I'm going to keep that foot on the floor as well and keep that knee bent. So I've got it around the right side of my rib cage and then looped around the left knee. So similar to what we did yesterday, and if you want to not do it in the chair and you want to do it on the floor like we did yesterday, you are welcome to do that. And just take a second once you get the strap on. If you don't have a strap, then what you might want to do is just keep the hand on the right rib cage in lieu of the strap. You could also take one of your blocks and place it under your arm. So you've got contact on that left side for that right side of the rib cage where we have the strap. So you've got that kinesthetic awareness. So many, 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 many options. Let's take a second and just rock the pelvis, kind of roll the sit bones under you and then rock them behind you and come to land where you feel like you're right on top of those sit bones, which might not feel neutral for lots of us. It might actually feel like there's a bit of work that happens to be on those sit bones. And let's just take a few breaths and feel the movement of the strap. So we don't have to make the breath any deeper, but just feeling the movement that is with our inhale and exhale where that strap is. Okay, the next time you inhale, let's take that right hand up towards the ceiling and 
exhale, lower down. So we're just going to do that a couple of times and notice again what you feel the feedback into the strap is, what the feedback into your sit bones on the chair is as you bring that arm up into flexion and bring it back down. I take it out to the side so if we had both arms up it would be like we'd be in a Y instead of an I shape. And again notice what happens with the strap, notice what happens with your sit bones. What happens if you go from the Y to the I? So if you lift up out into the Y but then you bring it into the I, what happens with the sit bones and with the strap? Okay, and then we're just gonna cut the head with the fingers and clasp the chair just kind of beside that other hip. Okay, or it could be your chair leg. And we're gonna slide that hand down the chair leg or bend the elbow. If you're keeping the hand in place, you'll bend the elbow, reach the other elbow over top. And we're gonna come back up. And we're just gonna do a couple side bends to the left. Stay feeling the right sit bone. Okay, one more. And then we're gonna release that hand down to the side of our chair or the chair leg, depending what your chair is like. I'm gonna reach that other hand up and just bring it again, fingertips to the side. So if you've got the chair leg, we're gonna slide down that chair leg, reach the elbow overhead, keeping that left sitting bone in contact with the chair, and then we'll slide the hand back up. Or if your hand is stationary, you'll bend the elbow, that'll side bend you, and you'll straighten the right elbow. You can also bring that hand here and slide it down the inside of that leg on the inside of that knee. Okay, so now you could stay with one side or the other, or we're gonna move and flow for about five breaths side to side. So whichever variation as you feel like the side bend being a bend of the, and a, and a flexing, a lateral flexing of the rib cage, Okay, one more side bend to the right. And then come on up. You're gonna just loop that strap off, let it kind of hang, bring both feet to the floor. Find your sitting bones and just take two breaths here. And just notice what you notice between the left and the right sides. Notice if you feel more weight in one sit bone or more connection with one foot. And then we're going to scoot those blocks over and set ourselves up on the other side. Once you get your strap on this other side, just take a couple of breaths here. You might kind of roll the sitting bones under you, tip them behind you. Again, find where you feel like you're on your pelvis. And that there's a really easy sense of verticality from the pelvis up to the head. Feel the movement of the breath on the strap. And then on your next inhale, we're going to reach that arm straight up. Kind of notice what happens with our rib cage, our shoulder, our pelvis. Okay, then we're going to raise that arm out to the side a little bit so it would be in that Y formation. Again, notice. What happens in the rib cage? What happens in your sitting bones? 
that sense of verticality for you. Maybe go from Y then to I. And see what is on this side. Okay, the next time we bring that arm up, we're gonna cup it over, clasp the side of the head, and just take a couple of side bends over to the right. Again, that hand can be on the inside. You could bend the elbow and have it on the edge of the chair. You could slide it down that chair arm. So I'm inhaling as I side bend and I'm exhaling to come out. You might be breathing the opposite. That's okay. You might be only moving on an inhale and pausing on an exhale or vice versa. Just notice what you are doing. Maybe see if you can breathe in a different way than you are. Last time we're going to side bend to the side. And then release that and we're going to side bend the other way. So clasping that head wherever you want to have that hand on the side of the chair. So now the strap is helping to compress those lateral ribs and help us decompress the right side. Okay, we'll do two more to this side and then we're gonna take a second to just flow side to side. Okay, so just moving at your own pace. Reaching the arms or using the arms however you want to use them to help this sense of movement of the ribs and of the rib cage. You know, do you want your focus to be feeling grounded through the pelvis? Do you want your focus to be feeling a stretch on the lateral body? You know, what do you want your focus to be? And where do your limbs, how do you have to side bend? How can you use that strap to help facilitate that intention? And we're going to come to center, take that strap off, Let's plant the feet on the floor, take a second, just notice what you notice. Feel the left and right side, notice the movement of your inhale and your exhale, the quality of the breath itself. Okay, so we're going to set the strap down and you're going to take your two blocks. If your blocks are like mine and they're cork um, and that's, you know, a, several pounds. So if that's too much weight or if they're wood, I have wood ones too and they're really heavy. <laughs> if that feels like too much weight, then go with one block. But I kind of want the two because there's a, a balance and a focus change that happens. So we're gonna find ourselves on our sit bones, take our legs kind of wide here, and then we're gonna think about sitting back into our hips as we reach that arm overhead and the other hand reaches down to the floor. Okay, so we're rotating through that torso and then we're gonna press ourselves back up and like we're holding that serving tray. Okay, so again, the left arm is sliding through the inner thigh, it's reaching towards the floor, and I reach that right arm up overhead. I want to think about trying to keep both sides of my pelvis down and on the chair, reaching towards that back edge of the chair. Okay, 
Maybe I just come to where my elbow comes to the inside of the knee and I don't go all the way down to the floor. Maybe we're gonna do one more to this side. If you wanna play a little bit, you could tip one of the blocks up on its end. The task being about not dropping the block. <laughs> Okay, and then we're gonna switch hands. <laughs> okay, so we've got that, the blocks balancing on that other side and sliding that right arm down the inside of that right thigh, reaching that left hand up, feeling how it is to rotate the torso, hinge at the hips on this side rotate at the shoulder. So just feel what's different on this side. You might notice that the rotation is easier at the neck but harder at the waist on this side or vice versa. Okay, one last one. If you want to tip the block up to give a slightly different focus. You know, when we're trying not to um, drop something and we're balancing, the intention of our movement, you can feel it changes, yeah? Okay, we're going to set those guys down. We're going to come down onto the floor, onto our back, and set the chair up at one end of your mat. Okay, have your strap handy. And we're just going to place our heels on the chair and uh, nuzzle in close enough so the the knees are at you know 90 degrees hips are at 90 degrees and when the heels come to the chair just kind of notice like where the front of the foot is so some of us the front of the foot might point out that way or that way or one is up and one is out just kind of notice where the front of the foot points and then we're going to think about starting to push down to the chair with the heels until the um, pelvis gets a little lighter and then to lift it the rest of the way up think of pulling from behind the knees to the bottom of the pelvis. You could also think about reaching like you're going to reach the ball of the foot to the chair and it may or may not come to the chair depending on your ankle ankles and then we're going to lower back down. So we're just going to lift and lower a few times. We're not peeling up through the spine, so think of if you bring thumb to the bottom ribs and fingers to the front bones of the pelvis, we're just lifting the pelvis and trunk as a unit, feeling the back of the thighs, the butt, possibly back of the calves as we lift and lower. Okay, so now we're going to come to the edge of the chair with the ball of the foot. You may have to wiggle a little bit away or push the chair away so that the knees don't come, you're not too tight up. So I think 90-90 at the hips and knees. Find the amount of the big toe and the pinky toe and you're going to press the forefoot into the chair and lift the hips. And just notice how that is for you. You'll likely feel more lower leg calf stuff could feel a cramp in your foot you likely won't lift as high okay we just have to get the pelvis off the floor and then lower it back down the next time that we press through the ball of the foot and the pinky and lift up pause here think of lifting the heel get the heel as far away from the floor as you can and then you're going to rock the heel towards the floor. Keep the pelvis lifted. Press the ball of the foot into the floor. Lift the heel as high as you can. 
Rock the heel to the floor. Press through the ball of the foot, lift the heel. Rock the heel to the floor. One more time. Press through the ball of the foot, lift the heel. Lower the heel, lower the hips, okay? So we likely felt a lot of stuff just from the pelvis all the way through the back of that leg, okay? Great little movement for um, hiking. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna stay with whatever option you felt most stable. So whether it was the forefoot on the chair or the heel on the chair, okay? And whatever that option was that you felt most stable kind of through your legs and through your hips, we're gonna go there now. Just lift the pelvis, it doesn't have to be super high. And then you're gonna play with keeping that work in the right leg and seeing if you can bring the left leg into the chest. And then we're just gonna circle that left hip, keeping the pelvis level, keeping the work in the one leg. Okay, and then lower down, bring both feet to the floor, walk the feet out, just take the legs side to side, giving the back of the legs a little bit of a break. Okay, now we're gonna come back to that do, doing it on the other side. You might choose a different strategy on this other side. So both feet to lift us, then working through that one leg, bringing the right knee into the chest, and again, circling that leg, keeping the pelvis nice and quiet. Push, push, push through that standing leg. If your pelvis is moving all over the place, Keep both feet, just bring as much work into the one side as you can. Okay, and then lower yourself down, feet to the floor. Walk the feet out a little bit. Just taking the knees and the pelvis side to side. Giving the back of the legs a little break. So we're gonna do that one more time on each side. Okay, so bringing the feet onto the chair in whatever configuration, heel or ball of the foot, both to lift up. The pelvis just needs to come off the floor, it doesn't need to be super high. Stay working through the one leg, the other leg's gonna come in, and we're gonna move that leg in the hip joint, keeping the pelvis nice and quiet. Oh, my chair is slipping away. <laughs> Okay, and then lower yourself down. You could bring one knee into the chest, reach one leg out long. And just switch side to side. Okay, both feet come to the chair. We're gonna lift up, find the work in the one leg. We're moving the other leg in the hip socket, keeping that pelvis nice and quiet, nice and stable. Four, three, two, and lower the hips down. Alternate bringing one knee into the chest or taking the knees side to side. Okay, we're gonna come over onto our side. Keep your chair there and keep a, um, we're gonna use the block, okay. So we're gonna come down on our side with our knees and hips at like 90 degrees. 
You might want a block for just underneath the head. Okay, and once you come to the floor, that top leg, we're gonna take it out and stretch it out long. So it's just resting on the chair. Okay, now I'm gonna take that top leg and that top side of the pelvis and I'm gonna slide it away from the shoulder. So I'm, I'm reaching that foot towards the back of the chair, towards the wall. What you'll notice is when you do that, hopefully you feel how the bottom hip and shoulder get closer together. You'll have the top hip and shoulder get longer, but you'll feel engagement or a little pocket created between that bottom hip and shoulder, yeah? So we've got one side lengthening, one side shortening. So we're just going to slide the top hip up and reach the top hip away. Slide the top hip up, reach the top hip away. So just feel the relationship between the top shoulder to hip and the bottom shoulder to hip. If you're getting crampy in this outer hip at all, move a little further from your chair so that it's starting, you know, out by your ankle. So that as you slide, it slides towards your knee, but, but you're not being pushed up into so much lateral flexion. Okay, the next time we slide it, keep that shortening on the bottom waist. Keep this lengthening through the top waist. Bring your hand to your pelvis, it's gonna stay still. We're going to lift the leg off the chair. Think of reaching the big toe mound away from the head, lengthening the inner thigh. It's like you're trying to take the sole of the feet, foot, and turn it towards the ceiling. You'll feel glute med. Okay, we're just going to hold it here. Four, three, keep the waist long. Two, and one, lower it down. Relax, let the pelvis rock to where it rocks to. Okay, we're going to do that two more times. So lengthen that top waist, move the pelvis away, feel the bottom waist shorten. You might kind of press the bottom shoulder into the floor. Okay, then you're going to lift the leg, reach the big toe mound like you're trying to turn the sole of the foot towards the ceiling. Four, three, two, Keep reaching it long and one, lower it down. Let the pelvis rock, okay? We're gonna do that one more time. Slide that leg away, okay? Feel that length, keep the pelvis there. Lift the leg, reach the big toe like you're trying to turn the sole of the foot towards the ceiling. It doesn't need to be lifted high, you'll feel those external rotators and glute med here. Three, two, one, release it down. Eee. Let's come onto your back for a second. Notice the left and the right sides. You might bring the feet to the chair, keep them on the floor and just press yourself up into bridge one time here. Feel the difference side to side, lower down. We're gonna roll onto that other side. So block underneath the head, bottom leg, hip and knee 90, top leg reaching out over top. Make sure, I didn't say this on the other side, um, but I'm thinking of it now. Make sure when you set up on this side that the pelvis is stacked. So you, the top half of your pelvis is right over top of the bottom half of your pelvis. Watch that you haven't rolled the top hip off. Okay, make sure the top half of the pelvis is on the bottom half of the pelvis. Once you're here, we're just going to play with that reach. So slide the leg away from you. Hopefully you'll feel the bottom 
waist lift away from the floor and then let it rock back. Reach that leg, feel the bottom waist get shorter, this side get longer, let it rock back. So I've got pretty good movement here, but I didn't uh, always at all. This was quite gluey for a long time. Okay, the next time that we slide that leg long, keep it long, keep the pelvis stacked, and then we're gonna lift that leg. Think of rotating the sole of the foot around so the big toe mound is towards the ceiling. It's like instead of the sole of the foot facing that way, you're trying to reach it that way. Two and one, lower down. Watch that when you hover that leg, we don't shorten at the waist, okay? It's really common for the stuff between the pelvis and the rib cage to engage, to hold the leg up instead of the hip stuff, okay? So again, slide that leg. Watch that you don't rotate away from the bottom half of the pelvis. For some of us just coming here, you're going to feel that glute need. Okay, so you could just stay here. Think of reaching that sole of the foot away from the hip. If the pelvis can stay where it is and you want to add the leg lift and you can stay long here and short on that bottom side of the waist, go for it. Reach the big toe mound towards the ceiling. Four, three, two, and one. Lower down. We'll do that one more time. So this is where we're feeling it. So if you're feeling it here or you're feeling it back here, okay? Don't lift the leg. Play with another one of the pieces. Slide that leg long, press the bottom shoulder, press the bottom hip into the floor, lift the leg, think of the big toe mound reaching around towards the ceiling, four, three, shaky, 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 two, and one, lower down. Whew. Okay, we're gonna come onto our back. Just take a second on the back to notice the left and the right sides. You might press up into a bridge. Just feel how that feels. We're going to roll over onto the side and come up to standing. Keep your block handy. I just looked at the time so we'll save that the block one for tomorrow or if you're on Instagram you can look at Instagram and I use use it there today and what I shared I'm just saying just feel your feet on the floor and feel your sense of verticality maybe bring one hand to the low belly one hand to the heart or to the throat or to the solar plexus wherever Feels like it needs to go. And with your next exhale, just feel how far down and where that exhale goes in the body. Maybe we'll come all the way down to the soles of the feet. Maybe just to the bottom hand or even just to the top hand. Notice where that exhale goes. See if you can stay inhabiting that area of the body with your next in-breath. As you exhale, feel where that exhale drops down into the body too. And again, see if you can maintain inhabiting that area of the body with your next in-breath. Okay, let's bring the palms together, thumbs before heart center. Just let the gaze fall on the fingertips. Feel your feet on the ground. 
the weight and pressure through the mound of the big toe, pinky toe and the heel. So the feet, feet connect to the legs, the pelvis, the support of the spine, torso, head. Thank you for coming to your mat, for coming home to your intention and attention. Om Shanti Shanti. Peace.